Good morning, folks. Let me begin today with a share and a thank you. In our world, we struggle to get the facts a proper voice amidst billions spent on propaganda. So let's thank New Dawn Magazine for giving the topics in our community a real chance to be heard. They've been doing it for a while. Trust me, this is a magazine for people like us. I didn't even know this kind of thing existed until they gave me an opportunity to write about the potential for cold to dominate our future. David Hyde helped me adapt my speech from the Electric Universe Conference for this work, and while they were kind enough to send me a copy, I can tell you that the other articles in this edition are well worth the cost of the digital copy. I figured the best way to follow my Ice Age article was to review some more weather records. The site is unavailable, however, and I now call upon those who have been here since early 2012 to remember the last time this happened. It was clear that the government records showed phenomenal cold encroaching on their precious global warming. The site was unavailable for a week, and then the cold records had been deleted when it came back. Last time, it was just a handful of us screaming. If it happens again now, I expect a tsunami of outrage. Two straight days of earthquake condition index down into sea range, and... More moderate rumbles at best, a lack of large quakes put the mid-range tremors in focus way to the north, in the Indian Ocean, and near the East Pacific Ridge, often precedes South and Central American upticks there. Uyen Candidate No. 6 has become the first typhoon of 2014. It is only a concern for the West Pacific Islands as it will not make it to Japan, but for those on the islands, it will be terrible. To the south of that, we're watching the convergence line right over top Tasmania at the moment. That's the rainmaker and potential for a stronger storm. Again, no major storm systems in Europe, just a lot of smaller systems. High winds here, downpour there, snow up in Finland, middle of the road in general. Same can't be said for the United States. We've put our focus here in the morning and evening news, and unfortunately, people have lost their lives in the tornadoes and severe weather dropped by this system, so for the third day in a row. Local residents in the watch zone, please ignore no warnings or sirens. Proactively check conditions and your local forecasts. Keep your family safe. Flight 422, arriving from the Solar Grand Minimum, will be taxiing to gate E1 at any moment. Barely getting out of B range here as the sunspots lack magnetic power. The top points of focus are incoming on the southern hemisphere. The umbral cores, though, appear to have zero magnetic complexity at this time, with complete separation appearing to rule the regions. They've failed to produce any flaring since becoming visible on the incoming limb. In the rare case that they should indeed flare today, Earth is at a very low polar radiation danger. Checking NASA's magnetic portals for the inner planets shows only Earth in blue on the disk, far from all sunspots. The dotted lines around the other inner planet connections denotes they are on the backside of the star. The coronal fields are working to confine the opening's geo-effectiveness. Southern negative may never touch us while the next green positive hole is equatorial. Meanwhile, perhaps the top story in all of space weather today is the solar wind speed. 300 kilometers per second used to be a floor for the wind with anything lower seen as way too low. Yet this cycle maximum with a grand minimum on our doorstep, we've seen dozens of dips well lower than 300 kilometers per second. We dipped as low as 250 in the last few hours and I believe the record low observed ever is in the 240s. Again folks, this is during solar maximum. She's ready for her 70 year nap, right on time. You can learn more about her cycle naps in my speech or in that new Dawn article. And for website members who are five steps ahead of that, our special video due out May 1 is early as usual, Electric Earth and Sun. This is the official introduction to my Earth Spots hypothesis, Earth Spots like Sun Spots, and a first furtherance of the electric sun theories gaining popularity these days. Got some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.